The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the December 8th, terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie, a little bit sick, but perseverance roads. And I absolutely believe that we should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life happens for us. Not to us. That's right. We and I can make that one little two-by-four shift. It means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check out these circumstances of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls, the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating. To you and I, just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon, I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. And more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free. Pick up that phone. Now is not too soon. 877-927-6648. Internationally, 727-445-1044. Of course, you can send me an email, steve at tfn.com, and ping me inside the Tiger's Den. We're going to go ahead and take this Larnix for a test drive. This is the most talking that I've done in the last two days out here. But uh, on the man, but uh, not really sure if I should be doing this for an hour. If I start hacking away, we're going to just simply shut it down. That wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. I don't be coughing in your ear. But we're going to go ahead and give it a shot. So uh, give us a call. Let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes, and welcome to the show. Right now, we've got the uh, Dow trading up 80 points at 19,630. S&P trading up five, no, nearly six points at 2,247. NASDAQ composite 21 at 54,14. Russell's up 18 at 13,82. DAX closing up 192 points. The FTSE up uh, 29. Gold's back four bucks. Doing pretty well, considering the U.S. dollar index is up 92 pennies, straight out of 101.19. Looks like a little counter-trend rally is in place there. Maybe it's more than that, but at this stage here, it's still below its oscillator unchanged. I'm referring to the U.S. dollar index, so... Uh so I'd say, uh, well, we'll see over time. Uh, silver is back 14 pennies, trading at 1713. Lights recruit up about a buck, trading at 5074. Lead the charge here to the upside. Price line up 17 bucks. BlackRock up 10. Lululemon, what a bummer, up nine points. I say what a bummer because as I started to heal a little bit last night, was looking for uh, individual trades, stock trades for subscribers out there. And Lululemon was on it. Nice sign of strength after a couple of the patterns that you and I love to trade out here. Had it in the newsletter. And then uh, before I sent it out, went and checked and said, well, let me go see what this thing is trading at. Up 10 bucks. Like, okay, we're not going to go chasing after that one. But uh, what's nice is the pattern that is out there. So remind me later, we'll go take a look at that. Now we, we can see those patterns that you and I love to trade and that sign of strength that Tom teaches us to certainly look for off of the bottom. And that's exactly what we saw yesterday inside of Lululemon. To the downside, you got Radius Health off 10 uh, bucks. That's 19%. Northrop Grumman down uh, 9 uh, bucks out there. 3.5% O'Reilly Automotive down uh, 6 And the uh, question is, hey, where, where do we want to start? And that's that, you know, where do we want to start? So the first question that uh, was uh, was uh, that Tucker had asked about inside the uh, den. Uh, and I don't know if there's been discussion about it. I really just turned on everything here, um, you know, 15 minutes ago. So hopefully I'm not covering things that have already been covered. But the question is, hey, why is the market going up and the VIX is going up at the same time? And if we take a look at the VIX, certainly it is unusual behavior. So the question is well justified. And what you and I have to do is we've got to try to figure out um, the meaning behind it and or how is it that one would trade it. So you've got the VIX uh, right now trading out at uh, about uh, 1333. And ordinarily, if the VIX were to close above 1279 today, there would be a 95% chance that the S&P 500 should be negative. Now, it's anything but negative as we speak right now. So there is a strong message behind that, right? If you've got a 95% probability of something occurring and it doesn't occur out there, you know what we, we like to say, you and I, we like to say there's nothing more bullish than a failed bearish 
message or pattern out here. This would certainly qualify as one of those, right? And we use uh, tools and technical tools, and when they don't work, we just kind of put them off on the shelf until they come back into vogue. But right now, today, I'm telling you, the number now it's going to change over time here, meaning during the next couple of hours, but right around 1279 would be the number. VIX is trading right now at uh, 1333. Nothing more bullish than a failed bearish message because 95% of the time, look, when I say 95% of the time, that's not something I'm pulling out of my arse out there. I do not do that. You know I don't do that. I go back and I it's, I don't write a newsletter called Mastering Probability just because it sounds all nice out there. It's because I actually go ahead and do the work just as you do. And so when I say that, you can go back to, I believe, 2001 is when I've got the uh, data for when did the VIX start trading? Like in the late 80s, right? My data, I don't think, goes back that far, but I know I've gone back to 2001. So 2001 were 2007. Maybe I did go back further than that, but at least 2001 out there. And all those data points tell me that 95% of the time what the S&P 500 should do out there. So that's a beautiful thing. Now, what I don't know is if the VIX closes above 1416, the 50-day exponential moving average, I don't know what that percentage is. What percentage of the odds are that the VIX should, in fact, close lower, uh, not the VIX, but the S&P should close lower on the day? So uh, let's not worry too much because, look, the VIX, bottom line, it's just really measuring the expected movement in the S&P 500 index over the next 30-day period out here. So let's not get too tied into it. What I will say is actually when I take a look at the VIX itself, the cash spot index, which right now again traded at 1333, compared to all of its front month future contracts out here, which is taking us into August of 2017. Yeah, August of 2017. It's traded 1982. What I can tell you is that percentage difference between 1982 and the 1333 level is not at a high enough percentage difference to form a top. Yesterday was not even. In fact, if I go back and I take a look at the same real scenario out here, you know how I like to use that word scenario. I don't have a clue as to why, but the last top that came in inside of the S&P 500 was on August 23rd. Two days prior to that, that percentage difference, this was the front month back then. This being, when I say this, being the April contract when we were trading back in August, we had that percentage difference up at about 79%. That percentage difference yesterday with that real furthest, highest price VIX contract was only at, uh, what was it, 50, uh, 60, 60, 66%. It was not enough. It was not high enough. So the activity that we're seeing here today, although may look unusual, it's actually normal. It's more of a bullish message. So here's a secondary bullish message for you with regard to the volatility index out here. So that is the best way for me to describe to you, Tucker, and everybody else that's listening in um, uh, with regard to, hey, why is Zivix doing that? More so, what is the real message behind it? Because some people are going to believe the message is that it is just simply a rug pull, that this is just a fake out, that you're going to see just one hell of a, can I say hell of a? You're going to see one hell of a decline in the markets. Now, you could see that, but it's not because of this message here in the VIX. And the likelihood of that occurring, <laughs> yeah, it's not much. This market is going to continue moving higher. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNM.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. Dow's up 88, S&P's up 6. Let's go out to Clearwater and spend some time with Ron. Ron, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing good. Excellent. I'm, uh, uh, you want to uh, take a look at the uh, LABU, the Direction Daily S&P Biotech Bull, three times, the uh, uh, triple out there. So tell us what you're doing, how we can help you. Well, I entered this morning around 34.50, and um, I'm right about at the uh, 618 retracement on the high of 49.40. And uh, I'd like to know where to put my stop. Okay. So let's take a look at LABU, um, which is the bull of the biotech. Uh, and this is the S&P biotech. So that wouldn't be the IBB that we would be trading this off of. Uh, so I'm going to ask for either help from you, Ron, or folks in the den. Do you know what this is actually traded off of? What's the underlying in essence, instrument. And if you don't know, we're still going to answer the question specifically just by just looking at the LABU. Yeah, I but, don't know. I thought it was the IBB. Uh, Jay says it's the IBB. Is it? Is it Jay really the uh, the IBB? Even though this is the uh, S and P Biotech versus the Nasdaq Biotech, and it may be. I, I just because uh, I I don't trade it. I don't know. So they're saying the IBB. So we'll, we can take a look at that. And 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 thanks to folks out there. That's kind of. But let me let's just take a look at the LABU. And uh, by chance, are you watching this on Tiger TV? Yeah. Okay, great. So here's what we know about this stock chart specifically. It had a sign of strength um, that occurred here on November 9th, and that sign of strength was 9.9 .9 million shares to the upside. And as has been pulling back, uh, December 2nd uh, was with light volume, 3 million shares. Yesterday, 7 million shares, still lighter volume. But, uh, you know, because there was a previous, we'll call it a swing from December 2nd, had 3 million, and you're moving down into it with stronger volume, that would say that that at least that area would get tested. We also know that this blue horizontal line going across our screen is the uh, bottom of its uh, TAS daily profile. So ideally today you'd like to see this close at least above that 3456. I know that wasn't your question. And your question was where would you put the stop on this? Yeah. Well, for this to actually pull back to the high of November 8th, 
which is uh, 3234. And that is more likely than not where this will pull back to if you see a close below that TAS daily profile. So watch the 3456 level today. You're in at 3450, I think. So, right. you know, you, it becomes, you, it's not like you're, you have a lot wagered necessarily on this. And, and this is going to give you some options. But watch 3456 as you come into the close today. If you close back above it, and especially if you can do it with less than uh, 7.1 million shares, then, then maybe it's okay to stay there. Um, mm -hmm. If it closes below that 34.56 or specifically 33.83, yesterday's low, then that says, and it's, you still may want to go ahead and hang on the trade, I don't know. But to answer your question, that says that this is more likely than not going to pull back to, at a minimum, 32.34. And more likely than not, I would have to say 28.55 before it gives you that next piece of information, which is a kind of a higher volume swing point low with 9.2 million shares. I'm looking at November 3rd. So that's mm -hmm. what that's how I would really answer your question because what we want to do is say, what do the stock charts tell us where price is likely to head to? Now, because the IBB is the underlying instrument here, um, what we really want to do, and because uh, the IBB is not a triple, we really want to answer the question that you're searching for and really trade it, in essence, off of the underlying instrument. So that says you'd be watching the IBB. Now, in the case of the IBB, it doesn't look good as we take a look at its stock chart out here. And the reason that it doesn't look good is because it's underneath daily and weekly TAS market profiles. It's already into that uh, move to the upside out. Well, let me, hold on, hold on a sec. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me restart, let me start that over again because let me just put a line across the screen here. So this is already into that first gap that we looked at. And that is at that gap from November, really it was November the 9th, had 11 million shares. So yesterday was a test of that gap with quite a bit lighter volume, 4.2 million shares, a test and a rejection of that area. Today we're trading right back on it again, even what looks like lighter volume today. So this says, well, okay, this is pulled back into a breakout area with lighter volume. So you may have something in this trade out here, more so on the IBB. So just do me a favor. Just confirm, you know, go back and take a look at LAB. You just confirm that really the underlying instrument on it is, in fact, the IBB, or at least the weighting of the top 10 happens to represent the IBB uh, top 10 out here. Because, you know, one's the NASDAQ, one's the S&P, and there could be, that could be the differentiation out here. Is that is that making sense what I'm yeah what I'm, yeah this is very helpful yeah I, I just it just I just want to make sure I, you know, I, had to, I hate to give you bad information out there yeah. but if you go back and you take a look at LA and it may be the LABD I don't know which one it is that will give you the underlying it's which just match them up if it's if if it's not IBB is not the underlying instrument then what you and I need to do is figure out what that is to better answer that question out here. Nonetheless, right. price price can continue. Now, the real area where this thing, you know, perhaps began breaking out might have been that uh, swing point from November 3rd. You know, that it, it easily the IBB could 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 test that too. So, uh, the the thing that I don't like, there are many things that I don't like about IBB. One is that this really doesn't give you any kind of a bullish signal until it moves above 273.36, to be exact. And that is its oscillator and change. Let me show you what I'm referring to here, Ron, and that is this. Okay, there's nothing more bearish than price moving lower with a falling oscillator when it's below zero. And yesterday, this clearly moved below the uh, zero line. So it's really giving us a message here that is not a real positive one. That doesn't mean that uh, that the trade won't work out for you, but it's just not ideal. Um, you know what took place yesterday, what is still doing today, having a falling price oscillator, the difference between two exponential moving averages in this case here, 19 and 39. Um, it's just not ideal for that to take place. Now, one of our dinners typed in the symbol XPH. XPH. Let me just see. I don't know if that was for us. But just in case, because there's exclamation points, uh, that is it. So that is the Spider S&P pharmaceutical. That's the pharmaceuticals, and L A B U. Is that what your U is? That the pharmaceuticals? I don't know. I think that's what you've got to do because that says biotech, so that might not exactly be correct. Yeah. But 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 do that kind of work out there, and uh, just oh, with okay. regard to. 
just with regard to Mark, you watch 3456. That's the best piece of information that I could give to you today. All right? 3456. Got it. Yeah. And uh, but, kudos to you on your call. Amazing. Well, th thank you. I, hey, I have a 50-50 chance of being right on calls, right? <laughs> it's, it's either going to be right or wrong. <laughs> <we> so. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. All right, my All friend. Right, hey, Steve. thanks so much for calling. That was Ron in Clearwater. And, uh, boy, I'd really like to nail that down with regard to what is the underlying instruments. But, folks, that's all that you've got to do as well. You can go to any of these ETFs, and uh, you should be able to find the, uh, the instruments that make up the entire basket. And uh, from there, you can figure out what the top 10 holdings are usually, because that's more than 50%. And then do the work on each of the individual stocks. And that sometimes might help you out as well. Now we've got Mr. Bill saying XBI. Let me type that in here. That is it. Mr. Bill, hey, Ron, if you're listening, XBI is the uh, ticker symbol that you need to track this off of. Steve Rhodes from TFNN. We'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com <laughs> Welcome back, uh, folks. So Dow's up 81. S&P is up uh, six points. So, yeah, I thought it was just coming down with kind of like the common cold, which is pretty unusual for me. And that started Sunday evening. But then by yesterday, oh, yesterday, Tuesday, uh, Tuesday morning, I could, did not sleep a wink. 
uh, Tuesday night. I mean, really not a wink because I couldn't even swallow. My throat was as sore as I have ever felt it before, which was why I was not coming on the area. So I got a doctor's point, went to the doctor. T- they took a look at it. They swabbed it, came back, and they said, okay, well, this is pretty simple. First, look like you have strep throat. Now we know you have strep throat and take these uh, take the, take these medications, you know, just a simple, uh, just a simple uh, antibiotic out there. And uh, so I got some rest last night, woke up uh, this early this morning, was all charged, was ready to go long additional mining stocks, long the U.S. Treasury bonds, long Lululemon because of yesterday's sign of strength, had the newsletter all prepared, ready to go. It wasn't necessarily feeling great, by the way. And then before I went to send it out, started looking to see where things were trading. And voila, if I was not surprised out here. Now, uh, we'll go to the call in a, in a minute here, but let me just show you what we were looking at inside Lululemon. First, yesterday was a sign of strength. Seven million shares off at the bottom. But what was beautiful about this uh, setup here is it has a couple of our favorite patterns. Price moving lower, doing less relative energy. That's what that uh, black line on the bottom. That's back into October. Gives a nice little TD sequential count back here right around November 22nd. And then, voila, yesterday we get a sign of strength. And, of course, the target, first target was coming right to where this thing had broken down, which is, in essence, where it traded up to, which is the September 2nd high. Did not think that it would get there in one day, but little did I know. They were out with some type of report, maybe earnings, I don't know, out here. And it got right up into it where there was a breakdown of 17 million shares. So uh, good volume today, 13 million shares, but this is going to be a supply line for Lululemon. But you and I want to try to maybe go ahead and buy this on some type of a pullback. In any event, let's go to uh, Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Uh, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing well, Steve. I, I hope you feel better here soon. Hey, I'm telling you, get to get some antibiotics in the system when you've got something going. I tell you, 24 hours later, less than 24 hours later, it's a whole lot better feeling. So, yeah, thanks for Good. thanks for saying that. Good. Happy to hear that. I'm calling about. Uh, this is a stock I always kind of wanted to own or have watched, I should say, and and uh, it's always kind of been at levels that I wasn't going to chase it. And I I started looking around at some of these tankers the other day, and, I, and it uh, came up, and I, I liked where it was at at the time. I, I ended up looking at it, so I went ahead and bought in at, uh, I have 1,000 shares at 870 okay. on uh, Nordic American tankers. Yes, yes. And so I just wanted to have you take a look at... Uh, what your thoughts are on it? Well, so just similar to what we had uh, said when we took a look at Lululemon as an example, um, you'd like to see a sign of strength. So Brent saw one big sign of strength, wide price spread, accelerated volume, 11, uh, 10, November 10th, that had 5 million shares to the upside. Never really came, it really never got all the way back down to, in essence, where this thing broke out from, which you could say would have been the bottom of November 10th at 836, or could have been the actual top of that gap out here which was 804. Um, nonetheless, uh, and there was a, another real sign of strength, so to speak, not wide price spread, but certainly some good volume in this equity on November 16th. So it's no wonder that it really was never able to pull back into that uh, gap out here. Uh, today, you're up with about 1.6 million shares, so it's a tad lighter than you would like. But I think you have everything that you want in this, right, Brent? You've got off of the bottom, you've got two signs of strength on this. Um, where are you targeting uh, this equity? Are you targeting, in essence, first the uh, breakdown from September 26? Or are you looking at this from a longer term perspective? What's your so I think you've got this nailed, at least uh, you've given, you know, I can see all the logic why one would want to go ahead and take a long position here. Yeah, that was my first target area is that gap that you're, you're looking at there. Okay. See how okay. it go, goes into that. I know there's some volume, you know, when it did gap down. So we'll just see how it. It's going to probably have some flack there for sure. We'll see what happens when it gets up there. Yeah, you've got. Yeah, you've got really two huge volume bars. You you probably saw it too. And if you if you go back a little further left on the chart. Um, you know, what was once a big high volume low that took place on February 8th that had 11 million shares out there. So there probably is, and the bottom of that, if I didn't say it was 994. So there probably is a fairly decent supply line, you know, inside this equity. So if it can cut through that, boy, uh, even all the more uh, importance of this thing having formed a, a significant uh, bottom out here, you know, back on November 9th. 
Um, how did the other? Uh, so you you went ahead and you took a you took this trade here. What did the other tanker stocks look like? I don't remember some of those symbols off the top of my head. Is dry ships like one of them, or or some other? Uh, yeah, this is a little different group, Steve. The, there is a bunch of dry bulk shippers. This is more of a they ship uh, oil. Uh, oil. Okay, okay, okay. So Who there else are is some others in the, um, There was one I looked at that was kind of interesting. It's uh, OSG, which OSG. is the only thing that's a little odd about it. It, it seemed like it, it kind of split into uh, two different uh, or spun off one part of its company. Yeah, and so, uh, but a similar kind of thing coming off the bottom, and then there's uh, there's several others. I have to go. I know, like I think TK Shipping is another one. Like TK, there's 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 a few others that are in that area. Uh, Frontline Shipping, FRO. Right, right. Frontline. Okay. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. right, right, right. No, I mean this 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 looks good. Um, and you know, look, if this thing can close above ten forty. Which happens to be it's a Taz Weekly profile high, um, then you know the whole picture really changes, and uh, you know I think you maybe have a, a good longer term holding because this thing also came all the way back into the uh, lows from October in 2014. Now that test on a weekly basis, there was 7.5 million shares down there, it was tested with 11 and then 13. You know, okay, but it's out of there. You know, it's cleared that area. It's gone. So it looks like it's work to the uh, to the downside. You know, is over on a weekly and on a, a daily basis. So I like I like the trade. Nice uh, nice job there. Yeah, we'll see how it plays out. As long as your opinion on that, and I heard you make some mention. Are you with what the dollar is doing today? Or are you still considering going more into some of these mining stocks? I sold my stuff today. Actually, I was up pretty well, and so I just. I went ahead and lightened up on most of the mining yeah. stocks I have. Sure, sure. So, um, yes. So the answer is yes. Now, it's not because of the U.S. dollar index, but but since you so let's answer both of those questions here. So you mentioned the U.S. dollar index, and at this stage here, it's a nice strong day. You know, no no denying that. But until the U.S. dollar index gets back above 101.40. Uh, I'm going to consider this more of a counter trend rally at this stage, uh, knowing that its price oscillator has turned down, knowing that its uh, its daily profiles are set up with uh, sellers that are in control of this box, and it's basically test that box, 99.74 to 101.54. But with regard to the mining equities, not that the U.S. dollar index doesn't impact them, but they're hanging out pretty well considering how strong the U.S. dollar index is from a bounce standpoint, right up 90 cents. It was more so really because of this chart right here. And when I take a look at the Japanese yen futures are holding up pretty well. Its price oscillator has turned up. Gold, the March contract, is up above that oscillator and change line. Bonds are up above that oscillator and change line. So, Brent, that's telling me that these three want to form a bottom here. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Have a great day, Steve. You okay, you bet. Thanks for calling. Right? That was you bet. That was Brent in Martinez, California. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back, folks. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Direction's daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed 
Nest has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Dow's up 81 points. So let's go check in on some of the um, couple of the ETFs. I'm sure one of the questions is, "Hey, where's the uh, where's the market headed to?" Right? I mean, that would that would be a logical question um, if I were asking it. I guess I've asked it. So let's go take a look at the spy as an example. And uh, what I'm going to do is switch this over to the weekly time frame chart. Right? If we I'm just really trying to get rid of some of the noise out here on the charts, we just take a look at just logically, right? Uh, we take the emotion out of this. We just say, look, if we, you and I are, have, are committed to being technical traders out here, then let's use some of those technical patterns that we look at. One of those is certainly the lightning bolt pattern. That's that A to B equals CD pattern. In this case here, we're always looking for a uh, swing point, a low swing point where we've seen a change in trend. Well, that's very clear to us. That took place the week that began February 8th. 2016, when the market made its low. That's at the 181.09. Market moves up into the uh, week that began June 6. That's not unusual. Uh, makes a high out there of 212.52. Now, when it's making that high, the volume on that was 379 million shares. Now, the retracement here lasted for a period of about three weeks, right? One, two, three weeks. Down into the uh, Brexit, the June week of June 27, that low out there, at 198.65. Now, the retracement on that is only 44%. I want you to take a imaginary rubber band out of your drawer, unless you have a real one. I want you to take that rubber band and I want you to tie it around your index finger as hard as you possibly can, right? Like it's cutting off the blood flow to the tip of your index finger. Yeah, you can use any finger that you want out there, right? I want you to wrap it, a picture in your mind, wrapping it as hard as you can. And then what I want you to do is I only want you to back it off 44%, an imaginary 44%, and then let it go. Now, imagine the type of energy you have when you only back it off 44%. I want you to rewind that, meaning rewind that rubber band just as hard around your finger. And then I want you to back it off 61.8%, right? Just a normal 0.618% and let it go. Which of those two has more energy? The one that only retraces 44%? or the one that retraced 61%. Yeah, exactly. The one that retraced 44%. So that alone is a clue to us as to where price is going to head to. Now, the next clue that we always take a look at is, hey, what was the volume as that swing point, in this case here, the B point from June 6, what was that volume, 379 million shares? What was that taken out with, conviction or no conviction? Well, we take a look at volume. The week of July 11th, 460 million shares. So it was taken out with conviction. So now we've got two pieces of information that have conviction written all over them. Again, it's a weekly chart, so I'm not interested here in what's going on on a 30-minute basis or even a daily chart uh, as, that, uh, is, as, as we speak. Instead, we're just looking for where's the price headed to, the price projection inside of the spies. 
Until this pattern fails, we have to assume, you don't have to assume anything. I'm going to assume that this is where price wants to head to, 230.08. In reality, because of the way that we've moved in only a 44%, I would say this has a chance of anything has a chance for God's sake, Steve-O. This has a better chance than others, a, you know, a, uh, a, a good 40% chance that it's going to do more than 1-1. One, one. That's going to head up to the 238.63. That's on the spy. So that's what this chart is communicating to you and I. We can go look at the IWM. Let's do the IWM. We could go look at the IWM, do the same thing. Here is a weekly chart. Now, we can see, uh, in this case here, the B point, June the 6th. That had volume out here of 132 million shares. That was passed with 142 million shares the week of July 11th. And if you didn't like that, you could just simply come here to November 7th, 315 million shares. Same type of percentage swing re, uh, retracement, that B to C, 41%. You can see how this thing has already gone more than the one-to-one -one retracement level. One to two is 139.99. It's not going to stop there. Well, unless uh, all holy hell breaks loose tomorrow uh, and we don't have a wide-ranging bar. But basically, we have one of the larger wide-ranging bars out here, and markets don't end on wide-ranging bars. They can. Okay, sure. I can't say it 100% of the time. But for goodness sakes, a wide-ranging bar has a heck of a lot more meaning than a narrow-bodied bar out here. And it's not just because of what they serve up, which is good information, by the way. So 139.99 is the next price target. We're at 138.01. That's like a stone's throw. Uh, away. And that says that the IWM is head to 148.64. Again, just looking at the uh, weekly time frame charts out here. Now, you may not want to hear this. I can't imagine why, um, but you may not want to hear this because this is this is the message of the markets. If we look at the spies out here, the spy itself, uh, it does have some resistance. Again, now I'm taking a look at horizontal trading range boundary lines, green and red, weekly and monthly. Green is weekly. Red is monthly. You get above one level, you're going to head to the next level. So 227.93 or 225.40 is likely where the SPY is headed to before it starts to back off and maybe test. Uh, it, it could cut through it, but that is going to be the next area of resistance. So you got 227. I gave you a number for the A to B equals CD, but that's not where this thing is going to end up. This thing wants to head to 239.10. It's monthly horizontal trading range boundary line. Look, the SPY, the S&P, it struggled in this 209 area. I mean, let's face it. It hung out here since December of 2014. No, let me take that back. November of 2014. For goodness sakes, it is December 2016. It really was able to clear that area. Gave you the message right in July, all right, July this year. Came back and tested it last week. When I say tested it, you're saying tested what? Tested the bottom of that weekly horizontal trading range. So it's out of there. It's gone. It says sayonara. I'm out of here, Steve-O. In 227.93, look, we don't really use this as an exact measuring tool. This gives us our range. So it's headed into the 228 area before perhaps it moves sideways. It can blow through it, as I say, but it's at least headed to there. And then I'd say it's really headed to the 239, 239.10 level. And that's what the uh, SPY is doing. In the case of the IWM, I haven't looked at this, but let's go put this up on the screen here and see what the, uh, this gives us. This says the IWM headed to 144, even Stephen. You're at 138.03 out here. So that's using a couple of different tools to say, hey, where are these markets headed to? If we go take a look at, now this is an interesting chart here. This is the uh, New York Stock Exchange. And what is really interesting about yesterday and today, is a daily chart that we're looking at, is this had a real nice rising price channel. That, by the way, it broke. This is a rising channel, rise, pr rising price channel that takes you back into January of this year. Wasn't a nice rising price channel, broke out of it in October, tested it, uh, that was October 7th, tested it October 10th, said, see ya, don't want to be ya, and uh, moved down into that low here of November 4th. Now price has gotten back inside that price channel. That says this, this little sucker uh, can run all the way back to the top of that rising price channel out here. So it's gotten back, and look, the advanced decline oscillator reading. That's uh, the bottom panel on this. Right now today measures 194.96. That, folks, is, is as if this thing is up in space and it needs to refuel. It just got the fuel rods put into this turbo thruster out here inside the New York Stock Exchange. So, yeah, this is going to go tag its all-time highs. It's going to do more than that out here. There's nothing bearish 
about the New York Stock Exchange. And there can't be anybody left on the planet telling you that there is something bearish about the New York Stock Exchange. Just, just can't be out here. Now, that doesn't mean that things can't change tomorrow. Things can change in a heartbeat. But what you and I need to do is always take a look and see what's the message of the markets right now today. Market breadth is strong. Not strong like bull, strong, strong like Super Bowl out here. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back, folks. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank bank is a member fdic and equal housing lender if you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to tom o'brien's daily market letter market insights tom o'brien's daily newsletter market insights comes out every market day at around 9 30 a.m and provides tom's daily commentary on the broad market including the dow nasdaq and s p plus specific trade recommendations there's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity he'll give you the entry price price target and stop price of each stock and option trade with Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. It's 2016 and TFNN has a brand new programming lineup to kick things off. Starting January 4th, Swim Lessons by Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade will be airing five days a week at noon Eastern time. Join hosts Scott Connor, Kevin Hinks, and Cindy Faber as they host their daily options program live at noon five days a week with no commercials for the entire hour. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark will be moving their program, Living a Primal Lifestyle, to twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Wake up with Nico and Paige and start your day off right. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour by Nadex will now be live Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Start and end the week with the three hosts, Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, and Daryl Martin, as they break down the world of trading binary options and spreads. For all the details on the new 2016 programming lineup, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. <laughs> Welcome back, uh, folks. That was up 92. S&P is up 8. Uh, I have a question out here. It's from a uh, bear. It looks like a perma bear is uh, saying, uh, Steve-O, can you find anything for me that is bearish about the uh, stock markets out here? So, And, look, I think that is a great question because I, I don't want you to think that I only take a look at one side of the trade. And so, in fact, it's incumbent upon us, each of us, no matter what it is that we trade, to then take the other side of the trade, right? If you're going, if you're buying, that means somebody's selling. So what is it that they see that you don't see, as an example, if there is something out there? So to answer that question, um, and th it forces me to go to shorter term charts, really to help answer that question to say, okay, this is what you start looking for, for buying opportunities as an example. So we'll just go take a look at, I'm just going to do it with the ES mini out here since we've been taking a look at the, that the spies as an example. So we'll just start, start with the 30 minute chart out here, right? Now the 30 minute time frame chart, here's what uh, you and I know. 
One, we do know that price has been moving higher. This is off of yesterday's close, 4 o'clock. Yesterday's cash market close, not the contract close out here. But as it was making its high, we've seen the ES Mini go on to make higher highs and do it with less relative energy out there. That's the black diagonal line. That could be a warning message. Uh, about an hour ago, we got a, a TD13, TD combo, a 13 count out here. That, too. Uh, this is, uh, took place at 1 o'clock, so as we were coming on the air out here. That, too, can be, doesn't have to be, can be a uh, level of where a short-term top is made. Now, the problem with that is that candle formation led to a test of the oscillator and change line during this half hour that we were on. That's the red line. That sucker can act as support or resistance. It's a really good tool out here. I wouldn't waste your time if it wasn't a good tool out here. So price now came back, tested that level. Maybe it's just going to catapult itself. And But that's the only, that's a pattern out here. This pattern is irrelevant. Is irrelevant a word? I think I believe that it is. Uh, is irrelevant until you see some type of bearish reversal signal. It's nothing more than, you know, if you lived here in Florida, it's almost like it's irrelevant to listen to the weather forecasters, depending upon where you live, right? Because they're going to give you a forecast. You can stick your head out the window and you can come up with the same type of forecast out there. And, um, you know, so uh, and, and in any event, uh, I don't even know where I was going with that. Uh, um, you you want to wait for confirmation. In other words, in Florida, if they say it's going to rain, you want to see it rain before you believe that they know that it's going to rain. If you look at the two-hour chart out here, um, is there anything to pay? See how this pattern here, the same type of pattern back at 930 this morning, price moving higher, doing less relative energy. No bearish reversal signal. Again, it was a warning pattern. Hey, you might get some rain today. Well, guess what? That rain has gone away or whatever the poem is with regard to rain, rain, go away, come back another day. In the two-hour chart, nowhere to be found. Now, the five-hour chart, this is the one you probably want to pay the most attention to out here. And the reason is, is because we're now into its fifth wave on a five-hour basis. This uh, next candle happens to close the current five-hour chart. So if we don't take out the high, in this case here, going into the 515 time frame today, you might have a confirmed, or you would have a confirmed uh, seventh wave move. Maybe you're not going to get it today. You're going to get it tonight. But pay attention. So you've, you've got some, but now all those things are nothing more than signals in case of the five-hour chart, just simply to pull back to about 2230, about 20 points of the downside. And you'll see all the cards and letters if this was how it played out, you know, that that's it. Blow off top. Hasta la vista. He just made a major high out there. And I would say instead, uh, that's not the case. It's just absolutely not the case from the information. So if you're looking for some signals that maybe a breather might be coming, well, that would be it. So, uh, folks, uh, been great to be back with you. The throat feels uh, okay. I'll really know in a couple hours how it feels out there. But um, stay safe and uh, stay tuned. Because my favorite polar bear, there went that crack in the voice, my favorite polar bear, David White, he's going to be up next. And because it's terrific Thursday, is today Thursday or Wednesday? What's today? I think it's Thursday. You've got uh, Tom O'Brien and Andy Heck to take it on home. Take care, folks. We'll see you tomorrow. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.